good morning from a pretty gloomy southern cape. I was hoping it would be a little bit sunny and bright out here today because I'm actually after a couple of lizards in the area. But all I seem to be finding are teacups, which is weird. But um, yeah, we're going to give it a crack today. I'm trying to see if we can't connect with any of these lizards. Although I'm not super hopeful, but the chances are we'll run into a couple of snakes. There's quite a lot of tortoises in this area too, so hopefully we can bump into a patlova or two. But I'll let you know what we find. I just flipped a piece of plastic and something around under my foot. But it's just a cap skin. I was hoping it was what we were looking for. Oh, grab a picture nonetheless. Cap skin, happy dash for those defenses. Oh, always gotta watch out for the spiky bushes. Oh, there you go. It's cool, we don't often flip these, but that's a little parrot beak putt loper, or the common putt loper. Nice little pink nose on this guy. Very cool. You can see he's pretty small. They get about double that size. The ones here in the Overberg have nice sort of greens and yellows on the shell like that. But yeah, I don't know what this guy's doing under just this horrible piece of cover, but it's a little bit gloomy today, so he's obviously just taking it easy. Grab a quick photo of this guy, just pop him back. Well, not the lizard we're looking for, but here is Tetradactylus seps, the short legged seps. He was just under this little rock over here. This is quite a small one. You get about Double, three times the size maybe. Pretty cool little lizards though. But not the one we're looking for. But again, a species I haven't seen in this area before. So nice to get a record of them from here. Tetrastelic seps, the short-legged seps. So field herping in the Fainbos has to be one of the most frustrating things. You're here amongst amazing habitats, endless supply of rocks. But the detectability of the reptiles is really low. So, I mean, you're going to flip loads and loads of excellent rocks and habitat that not a lot of people come to. And you just you don't see a lot of animals. So, we're going to get after it and hopefully we can turn up the mountain lizard. If not, we should get some decent bycatch. Another species I was hoping to see, but you can just see part of its body there. That is a cape grass, is it? So I chased that cape grass lizard into this big thing of restios and I thought I had lost it. And just as, as I was about to give up, it popped out on a little rock. So you managed to get a hold of him. These things are absolutely incredible. It makes these lizards some of the coolest in my opinion. You can see they've, they've got tiny forelimbs, two tiny hind limbs, and you can see the rest is pretty much all just tail. Um, this one has a regenerated tail. You can see from right about there where it's broken off and it's regrown. Yeah, and these lizards just swim through the grass and incredibly at incredible speed. You can see their scales are quite heavily keeled. So advantageous when they're in amongst the grass. But as soon as they're out in the open, particularly if you get them on concrete or tarred surfaces on the roads, they slip and slide and can't move around too well. Yeah, we are going to, of course, grab some photographs of this. Um, I absolutely love seeing them. And something that you see quite often, but you don't often get hands on. Cape grass lizard. So here's just a better look to give you a better idea of what these grass lizards typically look like uh, in their natural habitat. And obviously just how well they adapted they are to living in, the, in these grass tussocks. With those heavily killed scales, it's quite easy for them to just slink along in this grass. They basically swim on the top of these grassy sections, but like I said, get them out in the open on smooth concrete or, or on the road surface, or even just out on a larger rocky surface and they slip and slide and that's usually how you catch them. But you'll see how it just slides away like that. They're absolutely incredible. I have such a love-hate relationship with little areas like this. You can see there's so many small rocks to flip, 
and it's almost impossible to get to all of them but this is where these lizards like to hang out and because it's so overcast today they'll probably be in their burrows so we just got to keep at it and flip a couple hundred rocks I'm not run into a snake but yeah we think the lizards today so that's the goal raucous toad well I say a little it's a big raucous toad just get him out here and then we can pop him back look at that big man we see quite a lot of these guys out here so let me put this board back and I'll just pop him back under so I just arrived at my new spot and Jiminy is staying there because I have this to deal with um, you can see these are obviously tractor tracks and I'm sure the tractor would go through here pretty easy um although having said that I'm pretty sure the Jimny could manage but I'm out here by myself with literally no one else so if I get stuck up here I'm gonna be pretty stuffed but yeah I got a little bit of a walk to go we're going on that side of the mountain and that's where I'm hoping to bump into a couple of lizards and we'll see what else we can turn up So I'm just still on the way to the little spot that I'm trying to get to and I came way on that mountain over there. I drove up and my car is somewhere on that mountain over there. But the sun is just starting to come out. So I'm hoping that's gonna give us a bit of luck. But yeah, here is the beginning of this little rocky field that I'm gonna start flipping out for. And let's see if we can't turn up any mountain rain frogs or any mountain lizards. Fingers crossed for the mountain lizards. So field herping in the Feinbos has to be one of the most frustrating things. You're here amongst amazing habitat, endless supply of rocks, but the detectability of the reptiles is really low. So I mean, you're gonna flip loads and loads of excellent rocks in habitat that not a lot of people come to and you just, you don't see a lot of animals so we're gonna get after it and hopefully we can turn up the mountain lizard if not we should get some decent bycatch and by no means exciting our first snake of the day a hatchling slug eater well a newborn slug eater these guys give birth to live young we see a heck of a lot of these um, especially in these mountain habitats but yeah just let him go off and do his thing. We're not going to stress him out too much. Later. And look there. We've got a mountain rain frog. Braviceps montanus. This guy's tiny. Check him out next to my fingertip. Let's see if we can pick him out gently. Give you a little, little look at this guy. These guys are quite common in these feinbos seepages. They sit under these rocks and rest your beds and typically call when it's cool and overcast. But I see the sun is starting to come out. We see a lot of these guys in the videos typically, especially in this area. So, and this being just a small one, we're not gonna mess with him too much. Just put him back under his little mesh of reeds here. I'm gonna just gently put the rock back. So I just kicked this rock over, almost on accident. And, oh, there he goes. There was a adult slug eat under it. I'm just gonna grab it out and give you guys a look. And here it is. This is an adult slug eater. Just a common slug eater, the same species that we saw, a tiny one, just going absolutely ballistic. Yeah, these things are common. I suppose nice to see them up in the mountain, but yeah, this guy can get back in its grass and we are going to continue on looking for lizards now that the sun's coming out. Okay, so I just flipped this rock and what I found was sitting right there. I looked at it in disbelief and it is exactly what I came all the way up this mountain for. This is Troptosaura montana montana. It is the common mountain lizard, which it's not a very common species to find. So I'm absolutely fizzing out here it may just look like a lizard i know most of the guy most of you that watch my videos are 
just all about the big snakes and stuff but this is probably the this yeah this definitely has to be the coolest find of the year for me um, i've never got one of these in hand i've only ever seen fl fleeting glimpses of them so now i have seen all three species and subspecies of the common mountain lizard throughout south africa absolutely fizzing out about this gonna get some pictures before he gets away and then i think yeah we're gonna see what else i'm gonna turn up so this is the habitat that i'm currently in you can see all the fane boss all these plants are starting to flower and get all their colors gives the all the hills here that sort of yellowy undertone not a bad place to spend the day finding some reptiles especially when you're taking off all your targets couldn't be more stoked with how the day's gone but yeah let's see what else we're gonna find They don't tell you about solo filming, you gotta come back and get the camera. Now this doesn't look all that steep, but I'm currently in low range, obviously 4x4 four four low range, and I'm crawling down the mountain. I'm slipping and sliding a little bit, but I decided to get down from the mountain just before the heavens open up and it starts to rain. So there's no point in getting up if we can't get down. So I'm just coming down the mountain and I stopped at a random little stream you'll see in front and these sheep just ran down from the top of the little hill here thinking I'm going to feed them. They think I'm going to feed them or they may just feed on me. So I'm finally at the bottom of the mountain. I came from somewhere way, way, way over there. And I'm just heading towards the gate and I was just about to film a little video saying how much I dislike opening gates. But I saw this rubble over here and I flipped a couple of these bricks and I double flipped two hatchling spotted grass snakes under the same little brick. Obviously egg mates, so I haven't flipped over this big piece of concrete, but chances are that's where they would have hatched from. They're really small snakes, so it would only really make sense. But yeah, we see tons of these, but I always appreciate seeing a nice little spotted grass snake. These guys are pretty cute too. But yeah, it's getting a bit late in the day. I need to start heading out. So here's just a better look at one of the, the prettier spotted grass snake of the two. You can see he's got these paired spots down all the way. Well, probably about, I don't know, half the way down the body. And you see then these spots merge into quite heavily striping and this is quite interesting because the western cape specimens are i mean this is pretty typical for them but once you get into KwaZulu natal and the sort of high felt grasslands they become significantly less spotted so a bit of a strange name for the snake considering not all of them are heavily spotted but it's a beautiful snake nonetheless we're going to set this guy on its way we're going to carry on so just got to this little rock pile just before the gate where I need to head out on and I just turned over this rock next to that little stump and get a brown water snake getting tons of little snakes today tons of newborn snakes always a good sign to see young young animals but a yeah, nice little brown water snake can go back under the rock oh, we got another raucous toad it's a good looking raucous toad much nicer than the ones you saw on the top of the hill there. But oh, just as I'm, we're about to head home, we start and crack on with a bit of last minute flipping. So let me work through the rest of these piles of rocks and see what else we can turn up. We have another slug eater for today. This is our fourth, fifth slug eater for today. Give you guys a little look at this guy. If you'll come out. Come on, bro. Just a stock standard little slug eater, a really chunky one, but yeah, he can go back into his grass. Oh, yet another slug eater. This slug eater is thick, as the boys say. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this is slug eater number, I don't know, for the day. Just 
gonna grab a quick batch of iron naturalis and put this guy back. We did have a double flip, but the brown water snake scoot it off as soon as I flipped the rock. There's just another little raucous toad. He has a good looking little toads actually. But yeah, let's see if we can find that larger brown water snake once you work through the rest of these little rocks. And just one rock over was that little brown water snake, so we managed to uncover this little guy. But yeah, he can go back just with the raucous toad. Let me just find a spot here for him. Although there's been no shortage of brown water snakes over the last couple of videos. If I just give you a look at this little guy. This is just one of the two out of this little rock pile. But yeah, this is a good looking brown water snake. It's got a lot more pink and orange hues in it compared to the ones that we saw last video um, down on the Cape Peninsula. And it's just nice to see a bit of natural variation, even within really common species. Well, we had a super good bit of activity right towards the end there. I've just left the second last gate. I'm on my way to the final farm gate. It takes until like four or five to get in and out of this place. But yeah, we had a fantastic day. I mean, I absolutely nailed the target species that I set out there to get. Um, and I got a couple of snakes in the end just to round it off. A couple of flip clips of this little guinea fowl running across the road. But yeah, thanks so much for watching and this will be my last Western Cape video for a little while. I head up to the eastern part of the country back to KwaZulu Natal for a couple of weeks. So when I see that, we'll be right in the heat of summer hoping.